Okay, I'm showing them live. Hello. But I'm not seeing it on my page, guys. <laughs> well, mine's still rolling. So. Technical difficulties. Always. Surprise, surprise. Always. Come on, Sarah. I see you live. Okay. Sarah's going to try again here. Uh-oh. All right. So we are going to hang on for a minute and wait for Sarah to get going. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no kidding. All the benefits of being live. Yeah. Where are they? They failed you today. Not today. <laughs> Every day? This is why I'm restarting because it's going to be a not today Satan kind of situation. Here. <laughs> not today Satan. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. So, you got yourself worked out there, girl? I'm trying. I'm trying. She's loading. She says she's loading. That's what I'd like to have every day is one of those little, that little thing, that little dot, dot, dot that shows that it's loading. It's like, I'll be right with you. Okay. I'm going to make sure I'm live before we actually yeah. get going here. That's supposed to be what our intro does, is allows us a few seconds to get live, make sure we're live, make sure we can see it all before we come on. But uh, today, it just didn't work out that way. It's not working so. for me here. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guess what? I show. You're there. I'm live. Yay. Yay. <laughs> all right, so on with the stuff. Are you there, girl? I'm getting... I just gotta get it so now we're actually on the screen. There you go. Yay! Yay! Hi! <laughs> okay, now, should we start over, Sarah? Oh my gosh. Too bad, too bad. That wasn't on a blooper reel. It's been a Monday, let me tell you. It's, it has. <laughs> it actually. started at 6 a.m. in my house, so it's. Been... <laughs> when you woke up to. What... I, when I woke up and it was freezing cold and I didn't want to get out of bed. How cold was it in your house? I have no idea because the thermometer, the thermostat oh, wasn't the thermostat working. Was like, her furnace stopped working and so she got up to um, no heat in Idaho and we're still in winter. We're still very much in winter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, all right, guys, welcome to Assemble. This is our little two week break in between uh, season one and season two. And so we thought we'd take the opportunity to introduce ourselves, let you get to know us. We've had a lot, a lot of questions. So we thought we'd answer a few, and then if there are any live that you, anything that you want to know, whether it be business, personal, let, this is your time. Ask it now. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've actually had, both of us have had quite a few new people on our pages. And as a result, you know, we're not entirely sure necessarily where you guys have come from, <laughs> um, so or how you found us. So we kind of wanted to give you a chance for if you're on my page to get to know Becky and if you're on Becky's page to get to know me a little bit. So you kind of know us and a little bit about just how we are as we're interacting with Assembled. No, they <laughs> probably <laughs> really well, don't want to know that. Yes, yeah, we're not going to get that in depth. Yeah. <laughs> either watching me just on my page so you get to know me or you're watching her just on yours and not a lot of the the flip-flop so we thought we would just give you the opportunity to be with us today and answer a few questions would you like to kick it off okay I'm Sarah Sherlock I am a fifth generation Idahoan living here I did not was not born in Idaho but I am the fifth generation of my family to live here I have been married for 10 years in about three weeks Ooh. um and I have five grown stepchildren. I have, at last count, 12 grandchildren. At last count? <laughs> at last count. <laughs> <laughs> wow, it changes okay. on me constantly. <laughs> I'll bet it probably does. <laughs> and I have a great grandson. So, and um, she's not even. I turn 40 next week. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So send birthday cards. Sarah's going to be 40 <laughs> next week. So, um, I am an adult congenital heart patient, um, which is part of what brought about the Much Love Sarah when I was trying to figure out my business name and my branding with that. And I have been creating, at least in terms of paper craft kind of stuff, um, I've been creating pretty consistently since 2012. I kind of got... 2012? Yeah. I got introduced to it earlier than that. Um, I was doing a home lifestyle blog, just a small little thing um, prior to that. And I realized that I was kind of moving more into paper craft with everything. So I started my first 
full-on paper craft blog in January of 2012 and I've been pretty much working consistently on paper craft stuff ever since so did you say you started out digitally I didn't I, I did start with digi stamps that was kind of what led me into um, the paper craft world and so my original blog was called folded paper printed pixels because I was using digital stamps with it um, say that three times fast <laughs> I actually used to shorten it to FP3. There you <laughs> so. go. No wonder. No wonder. But um, I got started in direct sales in 2015. And so has that been... So this question right here is how long have we been friends? So is that two years or three years? Um, Three years. But I think three it, years. It's kind of... So I actually met Becky at... <laughs> I picked her up at the post office if you really want to know. <laughs> I and worked, I made her be my friend. <laughs> well, I worked at a locally owned store that had a contract postal unit in it. And so she would come in to mail things. And I, I knew her as the very nice lady that would come in with her sons all the time to mail stuff. <laughs> because they needed and to then, carry it all in. Because I kind of avoided doing anything at the postal counter at that point. Yeah, you And did. so I finally wound up when she came in, I kind of got had to help her because the other person that was there <laughs> had was not. to help me. The yes. other person that was there was busy at that time. So I had to go back and help her. And I'm helping her do her package. And of course, at this point, I have been involved in paper craft for a few years with it. I knew who Inking Idaho was. I just didn't realize that this was Inking Idaho. <laughs> so I looked at the return address on her package. It was about all I could do not to just like, ah! <laughs> with her standing there. <laughs> Out of anger? No. <laughs> I was, try, I was trying really hard not to fan girl really bad. <laughs> That's funny, Sarah. That's really funny. So, so then I just started visiting with her every time she came in, and we kind of got to know each other a little yeah. bit that way. So, yeah. You know how sometimes you just see somebody, you see them for a long time, and you you recognize them, you know, but you don't really talk to them, and then the minute you talk to them, it's like you've kind of been friends forever. Yeah. And that's There's really that kind of what happened. Yes, so that is kind of how I picked her up at the post office. <laughs> and then, you know, I casually mentioned something about, um, do you need a catalog? And she's I like, begged yeah. you for a catalog. <laughs> she did. I wasn't going to say anything. I didn't even tell her I was going to join. I no. just, I told her, I was like, I have a really big wish list. And then the next thing I know, I'm like signing up. <laughs> I got this, I got this, it was late at night, wasn't yeah. it? Because I got this, you have a new team member. And I'm like, ooh, and it's Sarah Sherlock. I'm like, are you kidding me? I just saw you three hours ago and you never said a word. <laughs> so that was kind of fun. Okay, that was kind so of fun. your turn. Okay, so I'm Becky Roberts and I have been a paper crafting since about 2001. And my story into paper crafting is kind of interesting. So I had one child at that time, Benjamin had been born, and I lost my hearing with the birth of our first son. So I came off the delivery table with a brand new baby and no hearing. So over the course of a year, it came back to what I have now, which is about 21%. So I needed to do some really quick lifestyle changes and figure out how I was gonna cope in life with this new, it's not a disability, hearing is not a disability, but with this new thing. So I took classes in lip reading. That's the first thing they did is ran me through occupational therapy and I learned how to lip read, which is what I do 99% of the time now. And then of course I took um, ASL classes and learned how to sign so that I could communicate with my kids, my babies and everything. And so I um, started teaching stamping to the ASL community and I, I stamp with the deaf community for years in Sacramento. And then in 2007, we moved here, and that's where I decided to start my blog, and I thought that I could bridge that gap between my California customers and my new Idaho customers and keep creatively inspiring them, and maybe they would keep ordering. Well, that didn't work, but the blog turned out to be a real good decision. <laughs> so, so I got into blogging, and um, Inking Idaho came because we were moving to Idaho and I thought that was such a clever name until I realized that inking is pretty much every tattoo site you can, you can Google. I come up on all of those. But um, anyway, so that's how I got started is I got started stamping with the deaf community and branched out from there. 
And, and actually Becky is one of those people that if you look her up by her business name or you look her up by her real name, you're gonna find interesting stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> just, just look me up by Inking Idaho on every format because if you look me up by Becky Roberts, you're gonna get that Becky Roberts the porn star and that's really not me. <laughs> It's really funny that um, I go onto Pinterest. Somebody told me, have you checked your Pinterest account? There's pornography all over it. And I'm like, what? So I go and I look like Inky and Idaho and there's no pornography, no anything. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, Google yourself, Becky Roberts. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this woman is so famous. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, that is not me. No. So just stick to Inky and Idaho. <laughs> yes. So anyway, that was one of the questions that I've been asked a lot is why do I do hashtag deaf stamper on my Instagram account because I do still continue to stamp with the deaf community and I have um, a virtual group of stampers that I stamp with in the deaf community. So it's quite an art to be able to stamp with your hands and talk with your hands at the same time, but we get it done. Yes. Yep. What's some of your questions? Well, so one of the questions that we get asked is why did we switch to FSJ? Why did we actually join with Fun Stamper's Journey? Yeah. So, so shall I address that? You go All ahead right. with yours first. So a couple of years ago, Stampin' Up! changed their compensation plan to a flex points program instead of a cash program in their compensation plan. And I stuck with it for a year and a half and I was just losing money right after left. And with Nicholas entering um, university that fall, I needed to have some cash flow. And if I was gonna work this hard, I'm gonna get paid cash for it. So I had to dig really, really deep and uh, make a really difficult decision for my family to change companies to a different compensation plan because they don't take flex points for tuition. So I had to leave my team of over 400 and search for a new company and I found Fun Stampers Journey and I moved over there. The other question is how many of my team followed me? Well, I had a team of almost 400 and 11 people followed me, eight of which are still with me today. She's one of them. And so it's not really true that all of my team followed me by any means. I encouraged them to stay because that's where their investment was. And um, most of them did, and we remain good friends. But since then, we've moved on to Fun Stamper's journey in uh, May of this year, last year, and I've uh, rebuilt a lot of my team. We're up to about 170, 175 now. Yeah, Sarah needs a few team members. Anybody out there want to come join us? We are really fun. You're going to definitely want to play with us. <laughs> yes. Uh, with moving to Fun Stamper's Journey, um, I had never even heard of the company until about end of March, beginning of April last year. And that was the first time I'd actually even heard the name of the company. Was that before I interviewed them or after? Uh, I think it was before. Before? With it. And, and I heard the name of the company and I... So I looked them up because I'm like, I don't know who these people are, so I'm going to look. So I started looking into it. And, and as I said, I've been blogging since 2012. And if you go back in my blog, prior to me actually joining with other companies or with the other company, I was actually really getting into a lot of mixed media, a lot of art journaling, a lot of really that kind of stuff really with good. it. And... When I joined the other company, I just kind of let that go because that wasn't a part of their inventory. That wasn't something that, you know, for me, I'm working on building a business and that wasn't something I could sell. So realistically, I just didn't do it much with that at all. I still had a lot of the materials. They just sat on a shelf. And so when I found out about this company and I started looking through their inventory, I'm like, they have mixed media stuff and they have modeling paste and they have stencils and they have all of this splashes and the silks and all of this stuff that just really intrigued me and I really, really wanted a chance to play with it. So I actually placed an order at this point because I was already questioning what I was doing with the other company. I had already submitted my resignation at that point because I just realized that with me questioning at that point that that probably wasn't the best fit for me. So I submitted my resignation. I had placed an order through Fun Stamper's Journey and got some of the materials and started playing with them. I'm like, 
I like this. Yeah, she <laughs> I did, like this a lot. She did a little class for, for me and for another friend of ours and all of these things you can do with all the mixed media products. And I'm like, I had no idea. I have never done anything like that before. And it was so cool. I'm so glad we were at her house because that's where the mess left. And um, you guys know that I'm too messy. But it was so cool. And she knew how to use it all. All of it. All of it. Which is why assembled is kind of tricky for me because I'm a very clean and sim simple stamper and I do what I do and I do it well, but I don't often branch out. And when we draw things like the gel press or we draw things, well, we haven't drawn modeling paste yet. Yeah, not yet. It's or, in there though. Or what's the gel one? Ge oh, the gel medium. Gel medium. I'm like, well, I, somebody's going to have to help me when we do that. <laughs> and so we're just hoping that those never come up. That's how I get so excited when it's rhinestones and ribbon and <laughs> stuff she knows how to use. <laughs> Extra stamp set. <laughs> yes. I get excited about those. But every time we, before we do assemble, I seriously have this little hot flash and I'm so nervous because I'm just certain that they're gonna pull out some products that I don't know. You guys should see what's in that can. It's amazing that we continue to pull, the same, pull the same things. You would think it's rigged, but it's not. It's really not. There's there's about 20 different products that's in there. Yeah. I have a whole list of just different categories of products that we carry that we could potentially use with it. And it just, it, you know, part of it's because we're pulling four products every week, so there's yeah. going to be some crossover as time goes on. But it's really. But they surprising. didn't expect it to be in the first what eight weeks. Yeah. I mean, we've had many, many duplicates. So we're gonna have to shake up that yeah. that bucket really well. You're right, Michelle Warner. We don't do mixed media because it's messy. <laughs> we would need our rubber gloves up but to here. Here's the thing. Part of the <laughs> thing with that class that I did for him was to show him how to contain the mess. And she did. Because it really was easy. I, I'm very big believer of you know get a spray box. Get you know make sure you have grid mat down. Yeah. Make sure you dry things between layers so you're not getting puddles well, and stuff. And you know, well, that's what was really interesting is she she showed all the different layers of things to do and then we heat set it between each layer. I think I spent more time at the heat, heat, set, gun. heat gun than actually doing my project and that's really where the success came from because it was layered properly, dried between layers. It was really cool. It didn't become so, muddy because yeah. it was dry when you so, were layering. The queen would love to do a mixed media class. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good at it. So good at it. So... Anyway, so that's kind of how we, is that how we got here? No, I got yeah. here. And then when she started looking into it, she goes, oh, you know, I'm, I'll go with you. And I'm like, yes, okay, I have a friend. <laughs> <laughs> so from there, we've just been friends for the last three, three years. And um, Becky's had to see me through heart surgery and she's had to see me through um, some health difficulties with my stepson and she's had... Mm -hmm. The poor things. 2016 was, was a really crappy year in my family. It was so. a really crappy year. <laughs> and I, um, you know, have a medical background. And so it was really nice to be able to understand what she was going through and be able to help her and her family and answer some questions. And it was just nice to have friends, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So through that, we got really close. And then we decided that we needed to collaborate and do something fun, something that wasn't just doing makeup parties and doing classes and clubs and all of that kind of stuff. And we decided to branch into the virtual world and do assembled. We'd both done Facebook lives and we had both done, um, you know, videos and things like that before, but never anything with truly relearning live technique technology. And let me tell you, I'm 54 years old. I didn't grow up with this. This is definitely something Something I learned as opposed to this punk who has done it since she was two. <laughs> so you have seen us work through all of our technical difficulties and I, um, I, we thought we had a master until you screwed that up today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we discovered um, a different program from Facebook Live to use Switcher, and so that's what we've been using, and it really simplified things for us and uh, made a difference. And so we are gaining on our technology and getting our assembled show out there and perfected. And that also came from the fact that Fun Samber's Journey has so many cool projects, products to work with, and... I don't know how to use any of them. So she's like, well, let's just try this. It'll be a good challenge. Well, I have to tell you, Becky originally approached me with the idea of the Facebook Live concept back last fall. And she gave me her version, 
of what she was doing and I took that and let it stew in my head for a day or two and then I went to our next team meeting which was at her house and I hand her a list and I'm like, like she's she like had, what is this and I said this thoroughly, is our new job project <laughs> she had thoroughly thought the thing out I was still thinking of hey do you want to do this and she overnight she had come up with a list of rules a list of products a list of boundaries and I'm like oh, I'm a list person my what can goodness. I say <laughs> um, yeah so that was that was um, where it really began, and then and then the chicken in me, I put it off. I'm like, well, let's get through Christmas. Well, let's just get through Valentine's Day. Well, let's just get through Easter. And she's like, no, we are doing it next week. So we did our first little trial run, and then we went for it. And so here we are, and we started with what. 11 people watching and yeah. now we're up to thousands and so thank you guys that's been really fun for you to enjoy that with us and be a part of it and put up with us and share our videos and, and deal with our technical difficulties deal with our technical difficulties <laughs> hey until you've done a facebook live people don't you say one word <laughs> it's tough well, and you it's know part tough. of the reason that i think that it works for us is the fact that we both have no, I wouldn't say we're similar styles with it, but no, we're, not we're at kind all. of at a similar point with what we do. Yeah. You know, we both are very pretty much simple and pretty stampers. And very seasoned and stampers, so very comfortable with what we do and what we know, you, which is why this is, again, you'll, kind you'll of a You'll notice when we're, we're working together, even though we're not working on the same project and we're completely just side by side working, we still wind up finishing within a minute or two of each mm -hmm. other. And, you know, there's also the friendship that's there. So we've got the slings back and forth with each other. And we're, you know, both sarcastic as I'll get out. And so, <laughs> really? <laughs> no. <laughs> Do I need to go get the mug? <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, is, she's down there saying sarcastic things to me at the other end of the table. And she I can't, can't hear, hear her. <laughs> so that's not fair. <laughs> That's definitely not fair. Oh yeah, Jen, that would have been real fun with the shaving cream. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, she just sent a card over to me um, and she said, what do you think of this as the shaving cream technique? And um, um, I said, wow, that's old. We'll bring it back again. And she did. And you wait till you guys see the next Coach Collective because this card is stunningly gorgeous. You would not even know that's how she did it. It's wow. beautiful. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. <laughs> I mean, to sponge ink on the outside of the page, that's messy for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. But anyway, what are some of your other questions? Um, you know, I get asked a lot what makes Fun Stampers Journey different from other companies. You know, when it comes to crafting stuff, paper, ink, and stamps, they're kind of going to be similar. And I think a lot of it is... You know, first of all, the personality, because, you know, you're not going to get entertained from other people like you do with us. <laughs> that was a bold statement. <laughs> I just kind of want to. <laughs> no. But, you know, it's. But it is a very different company. Yeah. Everything about it is different from the structure of all the way up. The products are very different. The, the um, philosophy in the company, the style, the leadership. I have to tell you, one of the first things that I did when I got my my first order that I had placed was started stamping on glass because that was something I always wanted to do, and our inks do it. And, oh yeah, it's fun stamper you know, these inks. Oh my gosh, they stamp on everything: cork, foil, glass, terracotta pots, yeah. everything. It's the fusion ink is just magnificent for that. And I do have. Um, like on my blog, on, I know I think on your blog too, you have like a what how or join my team kind of thing. Yeah. A little bit and about it. And that's what I always tell my team, all the people that are on Sorry, of course the phone rings. About that technology. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought we had you on Do Not Disturb. Too. I did. I am on Do Not Disturb <laughs> and the dentist still called. Um but I, I tell all of my team, make sure that you just let everyone know that, um, you know, we are with a new company and that, you know, they should join our team and, and enjoy it as much as we do. So Sarah did a whole blog posting on why join yeah. my team. And she's got so many comments on that. So. I have I have a post that it's linked on my join my team page with it. And it's the five reasons that I joined Fun Stampers Journey. And I, I really think... You know, there's so many reasons with Fun Stampers Journey, and there's there's quite a few things that set Fun Stampers Journey apart from other companies. Yeah, lots. You know, and and even though it's the same, it's yeah, just it's, different. It's a similar format. Yeah. Let's put it that way. It's you know, we we have the same 
it's crafting supplies. We have, you know, the same format as it's a direct sales craft thing. But the company itself and the corporate team that's there and even among the coach community, there's, there's a lot of difference with it. There's a lot more um, personal interaction with it. There's a lot more... And plus it's just younger. Yeah. It's just three years old and they're still right at about 2,000 coaches. So it's still very young and very much changing and growing all the time. And it's been fun to be in on that yeah. part of it and watch them evolve and watch them make decisions and change and how they listen. And that part's been cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I just had Sarah I, or post about it, right? Post all about the company and why join my team. And that was, that was been a huge source of questions for her. So yeah. that was cool. Um, somebody just asked, you're not with Stampin' Up? No, that's what we're talking about is um, I made that tough decision to move to another company in May. So you can go back and rewatch this to hear about that. Yes. And then what else do we have? Um, I have had some questions at some points because people tend to confuse um, the direct sales format with it with a pyramid scheme is what they're they're referring to with it. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to kind of address that a little bit because, you know, it, a lot of people confuse an MLM with a pyramid scheme situation because to them they're looking at it and it's kind of formatted the same way. And it's really not because the difference is with FSJ, you're selling a product. It's not that you earn money when people sign up on your team and that's the only way you earn money. You are actually selling a product. So we have all of the fun inks and stamps and everything else that we're selling to you. And that is when you're starting out, that's the majority of your income with it is from what you sell with it yep. and and that's not saying that you don't earn something as you grow your team but I like to think of that as similar to if you take a supervisory position at a, a brick and mortar store or something like that you get compensated for the extra responsibility that you're taking on right and, and so fun Stepper's journey is the one that compensates that I don't earn yeah. a dime off my downline, I earn money based on what Stampers, Fun Stampers Journey pays me based on their performance. Mm -hmm. So it's not that, and, and same with other, same with other, you know, Stampin' Up! and the others too. I mean, this isn't different than that. We're just talking about what is direct sales. Yeah. Um, but that's what it is. And so you, you I, we earn our money based on our performance and what we do. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, and then that's the thing. And I know that well, wow, gosh, what was it, like in the 80s or something that the pyramid schemes were such a well, big thing? Well, wasn't it and Amway that started something? that? Something, I don't know. I can't remember. But, you know, and, and like I said, the biggest difference with that is the fact that it's not... They're paid per person they sign up, yeah. right? Not what that person does. Yeah, think, and so we're paid on our performance with it. Yeah. We, we're actually selling an actual product that goes out to you, to our customers. So it's not a just sign as many yeah. people up as you can kind of situation. Yeah, and so it's actually, not based on the people, it's based on the product. So you sell the product and you get your your commission. And I think Becky and I are both kind of on the same format of, you know, when you sign up with Fun Stampers Journey, if you sign up on my team, if you sign up on Becky's team, or if you sign up with some coach, you know, over on the East Coast or whatever, you're signing up for you yep. with it. And so... This is your business once that point starts. You know, for me... I'm not going to be compensated because you signed up. So I want you to sign up with your own purpose in mind with it and, and to sign and up to be happy for yourself. And that's why you're an independent fun stampers yeah. journey coach. And we've had a lot of questions on this. A lot of questions yeah. on this. Yeah. So. so are there any um, questions that you have coming through? It says, uh, what products from the bloom catalog will be discontinued at the end of march yep that list is coming out you should probably see it on my blog on the first um so there are some that are moving out what yeah. are some of these other questions here sorry guys i could try to talk yeah, to just you just trying to look and through. there's some <laughs> questions as well yeah so so um what are some of the other questions that we've had um, a lot of, oh, I know one that I get all the time. If you've been following me for a long time, you know that my oldest son w really went through a fantastic cake decorating uh, time in his life. So for about two years, he decorated cakes when he was in middle school. 
and he is really good at it. If you go back, you'll see several of the cakes. And I still, to this day, get people saying, oh my gosh, I love how, you, to, how your son would make the cakes and the wedding cakes that he did. Well, no, he's not still doing it because he's now a senior at UC Berkeley. He's gonna graduate in May. Wow. So gone by so fast. And his mama said he can't do cakes for a living, so he had to go get a real education. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to. Actually, making the cakes is fun. The delivery process was incredibly nerve-wracking for both of us. And since he wasn't driving at that time, it was mostly me. I'm like, honey, I'm done with this. But he does still make cakes for his professors, for his friends, for school. He does. He still does enjoy it. So I do get that question a lot. Yeah. yeah. And then, um, so, so our oldest is Benjamin. He's going to be graduating from UC Berkeley this year with a degree in uh, linguistics and Spanish linguistics, a uh, double major. And then Nicholas just started University of Utah and he's studying chemistry, probably with some sort of medical school um, in his future. Yay. Finally, something on my side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Something yes. you can have conversations with him and nobody will understand. Right, and I love it. He says chemistry homework. I'm like, ask me, ask me. Your dad don't know that. He doesn't know that. <laughs> so George is an electrical engineer, and so this side of his brain is doing something else while <laughs> Nicholas and I are doing chemistry. So it's kind of a fun dynamic in our house when everybody's home. Yeah. Crazy. Yes. So there's a question that's come up on yours that's, how is retreat coming along? Is I think they're talking about Inky Idaho on the road. Oh, our Ink and Idaho on the road. Okay, so it's coming along. This is the first year that we will be doing it with... Can you answer that question, though, Tiffany? Is Are you talking about Ink and Idaho on the road? Okay, let me just back up then. Ink and Idaho on the road is an event that I lend my name to to teach my team to do large events. And so I've traveled all across the United States teaching different team members how to hold an event of 100 people or more, how to budget, how to negotiate, how to get the venue, the registrations, the cost, the, everything. So we always do one here in Boise as well because that's my home base. And so this is our fifth year of doing Inky Idaho on the road here in Boise. And um, it's almost full. Usually, or we've been very fortunate to sell out other years, but this year, not only did we change the month from March to April, but we've changed companies and products also. So I was really nervous going into it, wondering how it would happen or how it would play out. But it's happening and it's really filling up. We will probably be sold out by the time registration closes. So if you're feeling like a road trip or you're local, come stamp with us. This is gonna be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. It's a two-day event. Uh, we start off Friday night with a stamping session and we kind of call it a little warm up to Saturday. And then Saturday you sit in the auditorium in the morning and you watch live demonstrations one after another after another and then we break for lunch. And then the afternoon we have stamping session uh, prize, uh, pro projects for you to complete and prizes and snacks and all kinds of fun. So it is fun. You can go to my blog to see the registration for that. But it would be Fun if you wanted to come. How is Daphne your puppy? Oh, <laughs> biggest mistake I ever made. <laughs> she's adorable, first and foremost. She, she's a <laughs> damn good thing that she's adorable because that she is is a beautiful dog. However, that weak moment, my vet called. See, our, my Sarah was 17, my, my first golden retriever. She was a guide dog. She's a hearing dog. And she passed away at the age of 17 and on over Labor Day weekend, as a lot of you know. And so my vet called weeks later and said, I have a, a litter that I want you to go look at. And I'm like, no, I'm not interested. I don't, I'm not gonna get another dog. We've decided this is it. And our kids are gone. We wanna be able to go when we're going. And he's like, no, you need to go look at this litter. So I thought about it and the next day I went and I looked at the litter and they're so cute, right? They're just four weeks old and they're so cute. It would be rude to leave with nothing, don't you think? So that's kind of what happened. She, so. She's saying all this, but she sent me a picture while she was there holding Daphne, with Daphne giving her kisses. And yeah. I'm like, yeah, you've totally fallen in love with well, her. Well, I did. I fell in love with every one of them. Then you have to choose which one you want, right? <laughs> and then I decided, no, I'm not going to, I just decided, no, I'm not going to do it. First of all, I couldn't make that decision. And I really decided, no, I wasn't going to do it. And that weekend, my husband's like, we're doing it. We're totally doing it. And so I let him convince me that it was a good idea. And she is most definitely his dog. I just feed her when he's gone. And when he's home, that's where her world is. 
But she's now five months old and she's every bit a puppy. Pain in the butt. And she's probably gonna be puppy for a couple more years. Yes, oh my gosh, yes, yes, yes. Tiffany McGill says, I'm trying to get more people from Mountain Home. Yes, bring your friends. Mountain Home was only what, like 35, 40 minutes from us. Yeah. yeah. We actually had, um, two years ago, we had a huge group of stampers that were stationed in Mountain Home, and we had about 14 of them come to our event. They weren't in our group or anything. They were just different stampers, and that was fun. I think they've all transferred out, though, now. So, yeah. Tiffany, go find them. See where they went. <laughs> you yeah. have one down here. How long did it take for your blog to become well-followed? Okay, so how long did, what? How long did it take for your blog to become well followed? How long did it take? My blog, actually, I got into blogging another thing that I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. I just jumped in and did it because we were getting ready to move and I thought that would be the way to do it. Well, at the time, there were really only about three stamping blogs out there. So number one, I got in on the ground floor blogging totally by accident and it um, just flourished from there. How long did it really take for it to take off? About a year. I think I worked at it pretty hard for about a year, and after that I had um, thousands of subscribers, and my you know, subscribers come and go. You gain 50, you lose 50. You gain 50, you lose 50, and so you never really are too even. I have about 10,000 subscribers. I've been blogging for 11 years now. Um, I average a little over a million visits a year. So we're coming up on like 14 million views or something like that. It's mind boggling, mind boggling. So um, in terms of about, um, I know some of you guys are probably wanting to know this, so I'll just tell you. About two and a half years ago, I made the decision that I was done schlepping my stuff to other people's houses and doing workshops and shows and parties and stuff like that. So I worked very hard and very diligently on taking my business almost all online. And a lot, another question that I get often is, how long did that take you? That took me three years of consistently following down a path that I had set myself on um, for success to really run my business 100% online. And that's where I am now. I have been able to, because I had branded myself so well through Inky in Idaho and not using my company's brand, I was able to transition into this new company, keep my brand and uh, keep blogging and still make money at it. So I make my money strictly on the sales and my team, I don't do any, I don't run any advertisings or anything like that on my blog for extra income. Do you? Mm -mm. No. Yeah. So uh, that and breaking into Facebook Live now that that technology is available and videos. I can do very I can do videos and I do do some videos, especially with my partnership with uh, Split Coast Stampers. But I can't edit them myself because I can't hear myself back. So I have to have either my oldest son kind of decide what I should have said or meant to say and you know, then he helps do the editing. So mostly it's either a, a one run and done and that's what you get, or he has edited it, it for me. But for me to do it, I have to transcribe it to closed caption and then try to hope that that's correct, read it back, edit it, cut it out, and then produce a video. So I don't do very many videos. <laughs> Not now, now I just wing it, this is what you get. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake, let me correct that on the next video. <laughs> At, which, Dude. by the way, tune in next week on that. So <laughs> How embarrassing. She just showed me. You know, we're taking a two-week break, so we thought we'd do the Q&A this time. And next week, we have a, a really um, fun video to show you, which I thought was going to be a fun video to show you. But she just showed it to me, and it's all the blooper excerpts, and it's all me and my big fat <laughs> mouth. And her <laughs> responding to it. I have a really naughty mouth. And... Well, not really naughty mouth, but you know, and so she captured it all. <laughs> and so next week's video is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Well, this is, this is going to be all the little things that you see in our intro that we run at the beginning of this. There's a lot of those little clips that you haven't actually seen before. Yeah, you don't know why so Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're from when we did our first technical run because yeah. we were just trying to figure out how to get the cameras switched around and everything. Yeah. And then when we filmed our little What is Assembled, there were so many bloopers with that one. 
And because I can't do anything the same twice. I could not <laughs> focus to save my life. Well, and, and then we had a little puppy running around too, and that, yeah. that <laughs> yeah. made some interesting moments yeah. as well. But So yeah. I had all of the footage from these with it, and I was like, I've got to do something with this because this is hilarious. <laughs> she thinks it's hilarious because it's not about her. <laughs> well, she's in it. Don't get me wrong. She's in it as much as I am, but it is funny next week. I think you'll enjoy that. And then we'll be back for season two. Yeah. Coming and up season last two. week we asked for a vote and you dirty dogs not a single one of you came in with a one wait somebody one person came in with a <laughs> one for me thanks a lot thanks a lot i actually calculated out everything guys and you guys were holding strong on that three and four i mean it was kind of neck and neck on that but four did pull ahead so four so we're changing okay so tell them what that means so what the added element for season two is going to be is color what? So FSJ has 50 colors. So you pick I one, two, five. I love how I learn these things live. <laughs> I love this. Wait, wasn't this whole thing my idea? Yeah. <laughs> I finessed it a little. Okay, so now you're talking about color. So by picking four, that means that we are going to be pulling from a second bucket that has 20 of our least used FSJ colors in it. Not our least used. You have to put nope. in some our that we like. Okay, I'm not playing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have some. There's, there's, I think maybe two or three. There's actually several in there that are, I know like I've used on a few cards or you've used in a few cards. Okay. But both of us don't consistently use all the colors that are in there. No, we don't. I don't so, use all the colors. And so these colors are in the bucket. So we have to draw the colors that we're going to use. We're going to draw one color every week. That has to be in our project. So. And then I can add. It's all about me, right? I can add whatever color else I want to yes, go with but, it. Yes, but you have to be able to recognize the color that we drew. And you I have to use actually. Just no. You have to. It has to be a good part of it. So. And that could mean it's sour lemon. I am or not outrageous using. Pink. I am not using those neon colors. Because <laughs> you know what? I will just have to pull out the, this was my idea card and I'm not doing that. All right, so um, now um, it will include specialty paper like gold mirror. Okay, Jennifer, I'll, I'll play along now. <laughs> <laughs> we've yes. kind of always just added like the mirror or the vellum. Yeah, we've always just kind of used I have. It. She uses a lot of vellum. She uses a lot of vellum very well. And yeah, I don't ever think to pull vellum. You know, it's like I just do what I do and I don't really think much outside of the box. Yes, um, Jill, I did answer that question earlier, babe. If you wanna go back and listen to it, you're welcome to. Yeah, um, Yeah. so now, okay, so now we're still gonna draw our four Our products. four elements, the products that we're using. And now we have to draw a color also. Yeah, and part of the thing is is that not every product that FSJ has comes in all the colors. So like we don't have pan pastels for every single color. We don't have splashes in every single color. So we are gonna have to coordinate a little bit with it. But so we draw, you draw one of, you, get it? You draw <laughs> one of these neon colors and then I try to use my pastels. That'll never work if that's what we draw. Well, and, and I had to do like, you know, it, has, it has to be that we can recognize the color because I can see Becky being like, come on gel press because I can mix it with everything else. <laughs> Yeah, that would be when she likes the gel press. <laughs> yeah, I am becoming friends with a gel press. It's not my go-to thing, but we're getting there. It's, oh. you know what, the gel press is actually very cool and it does some amazing things. It's just messy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it's so. one of those things that there's, there's a little bit of a learning curve with it. You know, you just have well, to get comfortable with it. Well, first of all, you just have to learn what it. to do with it. Yeah. You have yeah. to get comfortable with it's it. It's a very and cool thing. There's some super impressive stuff that I've seen done on it. Yeah, so. that is true. That is true. And if you guys, if you guys are um, purchasers, is that a right word? Purchasers of our monthly Coach Collective. Yeah. You see a lot of really cool uses of the gel press in that yeah. in that tutorial. So yeah, that is yeah. really cool. All right, should we wrap this up? Yeah, I think we're. We're about there. Any other questions out there before we get done? Just give you a second because I know there's a delay on here. Yeah, Jen, at least it's not shaving cream. <laughs> hey, Jen, did you use a shaving cream technique on your gel press? Did you? It's going to take a minute. There's a big delay. Yeah. Yeah. 
I doubt it. I don't think you probably could, right? Could you put a chemical like that on it? I don't know. I don't know what it would do to the gel. Because I know that you're not supposed to use the like the cleaner on it or... And doesn't shaving cream have a lot of alcohol in it? Well, of course, I we have alcohol yeah. inks we use on it. Okay, that's a to be determined. We'll yeah. work that out later. <laughs> no, she I did. said no. <laughs> no? Oh, okay, then there you go. No. <laughs> no. All right, guys, thanks so much for tuning in with us today. I hope this kind of helped you get to know both of us. Mm -hmm. Next week, come back at 1 p.m. on Monday, and we'll have the bloopers video for you to watch. Don't leave any <laughs> remarks. None of them. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Share it with everybody. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. It's so embarrassing. So embarrassing. And then the following week, we will be back with episode one of season two with the addition of some color yeah. selection. So, all righty, guys, you have a good week. And we'll see you later. Bye. Bye. Much love to you all.